Hello there. Let's talk about some quantifier stuff. So, first of all, we've got two different kinds of quantifiers. This is what's called existential, and this is universal. So, existential and universal. Um, existential means that there exists at, let me go back to red just for emphasis, uh, there exists at least one. So greater than or equal to one x such that p of x and that means p of x is true because this is more of a uh, like a truth value thing. So a good example would be you know there exists at least one person such that that person is uh, six feet tall uh, and you know there may be more than one there may be only one but there is one. This next one is universal and that means that for all x p of x so for all people uh, or for all x x is a person um, so down here you see a couple of examples the interesting thing about this is that when we make a substitution so it says there exists an x for which p of x and y is true you can then make a substitution and this is called uh, there are two words for this. This would be either an, uh, you do existential instantiation, or you could say, uh, you could do the symbol, and then instead of instantiation, you would put elimination, because you're getting rid of the quantifier and you're actually putting a variable. So you could say P of C and Y. And this is the C that maps to that x, just like that. C replaces that x. And again, that's existential instantiation or existential elimination. Now, the reverse of that would be to go from here back to here. So there exists an x such that p of x, y. And that would be called. Um, existential generalization or existential um, initialization. It's a little confusing because this is EI and this is the backwards EI, but this is generalization or initialization and this is uh, instantiation or elimination and it looks like that. And now here's the interesting thing about universal is when you when you instantiate or do a universal instantiation or a uh, universal elimination, you cannot replace that y. That y is, is not replaceable because you make no claims about that y. You only have a claim about x, that it's universal. So you can say this, and it's going to look exactly the same. However, when you regeneralize pxy, and, and again, um, this is for all x. This is only for one x, maybe more, but this is for every single x. Uh, and then you do a universal instantiation or universal elimination. We replace x with c, that's a substitution. Uh, and then when we regeneralize, we call that a universal generalization or universal um, initialization. I kind of like to use the symbolic ones just because they're a little more uh, recognizable than these, but either one is okay, and different people prefer different ones. And again, this C is replacing this X. Now, we're going to talk about something called scope. I'm going to write it over here, scope. What that means is, you see these parentheses, um, this universal maps to everything in here because you got a parenthesis here and here and then a closing here and here. So this universal actually applies to this whole statement whereas this existential only applies here. So if, if we look at this y, 
we would say that this y is bound to that um, existential. So is this y. And uh, let's put that y in there. But this y is outside of, uh, of these parentheses. So this only extends to this statement in here, just like we kind of drew out with that little underlined thing. So this y would actually be what we call a free variable. However, all of these x's in here are within the scope of that universal. So all of these x's are bound to the universal, um, the universal quantifier. So that's kind of scope in a nutshell. Uh, it doesn't get too much more complicated than that. The, the reason we do this is because, let's say, you were going to, um, let's do this in a different color. Let's say you were going to do a, um, a an elimination or you know an, an instantiation of this statement. You would then say let's let's do c for x and then d for y. It's a pretty common uh, substitution, and we'll do f of d or g of C and D and H of C and Y. You know, I think I'm going to make, let's color code this just for funsies. So let's make our free variable purple and let's make our, uh, let's make our X a nice aggressive red. So C is going to be our red color. And then D, let's make D blue, nice mellow blue. There we go. And uh, <laughs> got to do it. D for Y and then uh, red for X. And then free is purple. So I, I hope that kind of gives you a clearer picture of, of how this works. Um, since this x is bound to everything, or uh, since all of these x's in here are bound to this x, whenever you substitute, you can kind of plug that new variable, which is c, in for that x. But whenever you do this y substitution with a d, you have to pay attention to the fact that that only applies to this small section right here. And, uh, oh, oh man. I almost made a pretty bad mistake right there. That should still be y because it is a free variable and you cannot substitute this y for a d because these d's are bound to that y, but this y is a free variable. You probably won't see anything written like this because that's a bit confusing to use the same variable name for something that is um, a free variable and something that's bounded. But uh, just make sure you pay close attention to that. All right, so that was some basics about quantifiers. I hope it helped, and uh, thank you for watching.